I courted once a pretty girl, I courted her right well. Her name was Sally Merrick Merrill, and mine was Tommy Bell. I often went to her father's house, and he was never a warm. But sure as ever he cop me there, he tickle me round the rum, see how did he, um, see how did he, um, see how did he, um. Going back to old Tommy, he's a rum old cuss, he was a turnip hoeing one day out in the field, right close to the road, and... Of course, he got the end of the row, and he was having a bit of a breather, or leaning on the whole handle, and chap in a posh car stopped, just opposite him. He said, hey, Tommy, he said, where did this road go to? Oh, Tommy said, I don't go nowhere as far as I know. He said, I've been here nigh on 70 year, and I ain't not move yet. Now, old Johnny Oker went to town the other day, his horse fell down and his cart ran away. So he ran up the hill crying, stop, 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 then fell from the bottom right to the top. Now, old Johnny Oker went to bed the other night, he blew himself out instead of the light. When he awoke next morning to have a look around, he found himself dead with the house burnt down. Some old woman said to me, I said, I wish I said, Mr. Pritchard, you'd fetch the doctor. And the damn snow, you know, was a foot deep then. And the snowed like the devil. I had to go to North Leach, that's six miles from you, and I was from North Leach, you done it. I do. I got there, and I knocked at the door. And Dr. Ryan was there then, Dr. Ryan. I said, who's there? Oh, I said, Pritchard and Bybury. I said, what do you want? I said, what's the you to come to old John Green up in the corner? He's very, very ill. What a, I said, what a night for me to come, isn't it? I said, ah, what a hell of a night for me to come here to fetch you. Well, I said, you go and wake my ostler up, up in the ostler, he's trying out where I lived, so I'll give you just a jog right back. And uh, poor old John was down in bed, you know, sucking up his last breath in the years I could, you know. And I said, never forget it, I was that side of the bed, and all dumb to the side of crying, you know. And doctor leaned over the back of the bed and says, what a fool you was to fetch me here tonight, Pritchard. Well, I said, I done as the woman I asked me. What else could he do? I said, well, I said, I can't do any good, no, I ain't come. I said, oh, the devil's that. Well, I said, the man's dead. It's a big Christ, I said. Give me a shock, you know. I should never get it all. John rose up in bed and says, I be a dead doctor. And the old woman pushing down in bed said, You hold your tongue, doctor, now it's better than you. <laughs> I often laughed about it. <laughs> That's quite true. So the early one morning at the break of the day, and the cocks was a crow in the vermer did I. Come rise, my good fellows, come rise, we good will. Your asses want something, their bellies to fill. So when four o'clock comes, then up we do rise, and into the stable so merrily flies, and rubbing and scrubbing our asses down well, we're all jolly fellows as fall as the plow. Oh, I must tell you this, and you gentlemen, ladies. Oh, there was a chap used to go to the little pub in the place, and... He got to go up through the churchyard to go home, and they got pulling his leg and says, "You all be sorry one night. You, oh, you hear all sorts of things, and somebody will meet you." And so <laughs> he said, "No fear, I am not frightened at nothing." So anyhow, there was a grave open, and the grave digger had left the shovel there, and. <laughs> A chap slipped out the front on him and he, he got in the grave and covered himself up in the white sheep. <laughs> and he said, Oh, he heard him coming. He says, Oh, oh, and it cold, and it cold. He walked across and he said, I sink the best. He says, I never took no dirt on to And he started chucking it in. <laughs> Yes, I'll give you an old-fashioned song. One as you will like. I went to market to buy me a cock. The cock did what it won't please me. And every time I fed me old cock, I fed him all under the tree. Now cocky went cock, 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 went cock is it too. Yes, luck to every poor man's cock of me own cock too. I love the spring. 
I'm very pleased when the winter and the snow's gone by. I love the spring. And uh, when I can get on my bike and off and then uh, go and pick flowers. I'm very fond of wildflowers. I don't like the makeup jobs I got today. I like to go along the country roads and pick all the wildflowers or into a nice wood and pick some bluebells or primroses. That was all this what I liked to do. And uh, I had more pleasure out of doing that. And uh, people would show me all these fantastic flowers, artificials and all sorts, but uh, they had a lot of interest to me. It was, the, it was what the Almighty made. And uh, I, have, I have had this. There's, there's three kinds of stinging nettles. Oh, that's what I'm waiting for. There's three kinds of stinging nettles, and I tell you, our people didn't have them. I used to put them in the kettle and boil them in the water, and it used to tickle their blood a bit. And, uh, and of course, a stinging nettle, see, so I don't put it too strong. I don't say go and put it very strong. But they had, when they was come out and like that, of course, they did sting uh, down through the blood and the parts of your body. Well, they did cleanse it, cleanse the blood. They do you good, and I'd put them in. Well, they didn't like them very well. They didn't like the tea, see. But I did. I liked to sting a little in my tea, and very often go down straight and catch out one and eaten, and it do you good. Well, uh, I don't know much about I I say stingy nettle tea is all right if you want to take it as a medicine, but, but I like it if you... Uh, wash the stingy nettles, pour the boiling water on it and let it stand a bit and then drink it. But my husband would put it in the tea kettle and boil it. He'd go out and pick these stingy nettles, never wash them, just pick them, bring them in, and if he thought I wasn't looking, he'd pop them in the kettle. And he thought as I didn't see... But I saw him, and I'd make his tea out of that, but I had me a proper cup of tea. I don't like to tea made with stingy nettles. Oh, we've had many a row over that. <laughs> a jolly farmer's baby, I, I likes me bread and bacon. And if you think I can do work, why well, you'll be quite mistaken. For I can cut and trim a hedge in spite of thorn and thistle. I can dig and clear a ditch, but while I work I whistle. In winter when the fields are frozen, trees with snowy bosses, I've got to tramp about the farm to tend the cows and osses. Me very air will turn to ice, as stiff as any bristle. I thrash myself to keep me warm, but through it all I whistle. Fred, you've told us about a lot of characters from time to time. There's been Shepherd Tidmarsh, Stanvale, and now you've got another one called Laughing Tom. Why on earth was he called Laughing Tom? Well, the reason being, he laughed at everything. You know, if it was funny or if it wasn't, he always laughed. And he's what you call a merry man. He was always um, looking on the bright side and he laughed at everything. He never, I shouldn't think he ever made a lot of money. He's sort of a come day, go day sort of a man, you know. He just uh, didn't... Uh, he didn't worry a lot. He was an Ashton man. Oh, definitely. Oh, right from right from the roots he was. A absolutely Ashton. And um, he came from a very good family. And I think in his younger days he did hunting and, um, you know, and sort of followed the hounds. And he used to follow on foot later. And then he was quite a man for shooting and uh, rabbiting and trapping and all that. And um, he um, kept the family farm with his sister. They milked about a couple of cows and they used to make butter and feed a few pigs. And he always kept some of these old English game uh, fowls. They used to kill the cockerels for their own use. You know, they got big broad breasts on them and uh, the, the hens laid brown eggs. And he lived on the best. He was one of the handiest men I ever worked with. We got a piece of oats and there was a lot of thistles in it. And I was loading the wagons and he was pitching. And uh, he used to catch out of about two or three sheaves at a time on his shuppick and he'd throw it up straight up into your face. You know, he's a roughy sort of pitcher, but I dared not say anything because, of course, he was come to help us out. And I thought, well, we mustn't sort of complain. And um, he'd keep on, oh, there's another lot for you. Put them under your feet, you know. And that's how he'd keep on, sort of laughing away. And, and then just as the horses were moving on to the next stook, he'd throw another jolly good lot up at you, you know, and you'd got to sort of uh, hold tight at the same time as you were placing them. He came... Four days for me, one week harvesting. We worked from 8 o'clock in the morning till 8 o'clock at night. 
And so um, I said to him, I said, I shall have to pay you for this. And so I went up one night and see him. So I've come to pay you for this harvesting. He said, I never done it for money. He says, I done it for the good of the cause. He said, there's a war on you, there. No, he said, of course there is. I said, but uh, you, you want to be paid for this. I said, you worked four days last week for me, from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night. He said, he knows darn well it was only three. He said, I never come a Tuesday. I said, I know you did. He said, he knows darn well he didn't. And he wouldn't be paid for Tuesday, and he worked on the Tuesday. And then I paid him, and then he gave me part of it back, and uh, that's the sort of a chap he was. There was no doubt about it. We shall never see the like again of a man like that. He was a real character, I should say. And the next coming was a soldier, and who could be much bolder? And who could be much bolder to join the Joe crew? The landlord's daughter, she came in, he kissed her on the lip and on the chin. Oh, where the point and cord come rolling in. When Jones is ill, we knew me boys. When Jones is ill, oh, 